Hello, people of science. Let's talk about cell growth and reproduction. We're talking about mitosis, but let's talk about why. Why are cells so small? And if cells remain small, how do you get a large organism? Well, you got to start by thinking that in eukaryotes, it's crazy to think that cell size is nearly identical from a yeast to an elephant to the blue whale. Their cells are actually about the same size. There's a tiny yeast, there's an elephant, and yes, they are pretty big. Uh, pro tip, um, don't upset them. That's a baby elephant doing that, just an FYI. All the way up to something as large as a blue whale. All of those have approximately the same cell size. So you've probably heard that the blue whale is big. I don't think people adequately really understand how big a blue whale is. Remember, cell's still the same size. Here's a blue whale. If you were to compare that to a basketball court, it's bigger than a basketball court. It's longer than three school buses. It's like five great white sharks. If you were to put humans end to end, it's, it's a lot. I mean, even a triceratops, which is a pretty freaking huge animal back in the day, was only a third of the size of it. I mean, there, there you can see the comparison by tanks. If you even want to go by weight, I mean, that's where it gets even more ridiculous. Like, it, it's the equivalent of 40 elephants. It's the equivalent of, uh, you know, what is this? 2,667 humans. Well, not that most humans weigh 150 pounds. Not Americans in any case. Boom! Take that, America. But, you know, even in comparison to a humpback whale, it weighs five humpback whales. You know, T-Rexes, those things were pretty big, and it weighs 30 of those. School buses, it weighs as much as 15 school buses. I, I mean, I'll have this animation, you can play around with it. It's just staggering to think how big it is, how massive it is, and it's made of nothing but incredibly tiny cells whose cells are the exact same size as yours. So let's talk about uh, the size of the uh, organisms. The bigger it is, the more it needs to eat. And of course, obviously, the more you eat, the more you need to poop. Yes, I'm bringing it back to poop. And to help illustrate that principle, there's an elephant. It's not actually pooping. I wouldn't, I wouldn't show you a picture of an elephant pooping. Uh, but anyways, you get an idea. It's a big animal. It produces a lot of poop. Okay, I lied about the not showing you an elephant pooping. There's an elephant pooping. Just, uh, just remember, that's about the size of her head. So, you know, just sort of imagine your head filled of poop. It's big. Anyways. So, just like a big organism, a big cell needs to eat more, and it also needs to poop more. Bigger it gets, more it needs to eat, and of course the more it needs to poop. So here you can see I have three different cells of three different sizes. This big one is going to produce a lot. Small one, not a lot. Small cell, small poop. Big cell, big poop. The more volume you have in a cell, the more problems that is going to cause. That cell is likely to die of a combination of hunger and constipation, which doesn't sound like a good way to go if I had to pick away. I don't think I'd choose either one of those. And the big cells die of both, essentially. They can't get their uh, nutrients and oxygen in, and they can't get their waste out fast enough. Small cell, small waste. Big cell, big waste. So that causes issues. Now there is kind of a way around it. A cell is going to be taking in stuff, eating, and excreting waste through its cell membrane, the diffusion and the transport that we've talked about before. So it's diffusing across the cell membrane, as we've seen sometimes through special channels, but the catch is the more membrane you have, the more cell can eat and the more cell can poop. I mean, it's trying to take in uh, you know, all the stuff it needs, and the more membrane that's exposed, the more stuff can come in. Obviously, also, the more membrane it is, the faster and get rid of that waste. So surface area, more membrane, is very good for a cell. It helps it get rid of that waste and take in the stuff it needs faster. So let's take a look at cell size. I have uh, here two cells of different sizes, though of course the nucleus is about the same. Volume is bad. Too much volume in a cell is going to be bad. That means too much food it's got to take in and too much waste it's got to get out. And in a big cell, it takes a while for this waste to get from there all the way to the outside. Now on the smaller cell, it has an advantage of that. Smaller volume, better cell. In the surface area, of course, is better for it to eat and poop. More surface area is better. Easier eating and pooping. So a cell has two goals. 
It wants to maximize the surface area. It wants as much membrane as is possible, because obviously that allows it to eat and poop faster. And it wants to minimize the volume, because too much volume is going to cause too much trouble. So it has two goals. A cell wants to have as much surface area as possible with as little volume taken up. That is what is healthy for a cell, otherwise it's likely to die. So you got to do a little bit of math here. you got to get into the surface area to volume ratio. Surface area divided by volume gives a very important ratio, the surface area to volume ratio. Here I have four cubes, which are going to represent four different cells. The surface area is already calculated for these right there, and the volume is already calculated. And don't worry about those so much, but look at the ratio at the bottom down here. If you took 24 divided by 8, that gives you a ratio of 3, the surface area divided by volume. Here, 96 divided by 64 gives you 1.5, so that's smaller than there. That number here is what is, uh, determines what's going on with the cell. The higher that ratio, the happier a cell is. So this one here is best. Unfortunately, that also means the lower that ratio, the deader a cell actually is. And uh, this one right here is, uh, he's, he's not doing so good. Let's see if I can't draw on him. He's, uh, yeah, he's unhappy. Actually, we're just mentioning he's dead. This one here, uh, less unhappy, but still going to die. This one here, maybe, he's still not good. And this is the only one that's like, woo. So, higher ratio, or sorry, uh, lower ratio, more likely to die. Higher ratio, much better off. Okay, I want to show you this right here with surface area to calcul or surface area to volume calculation. So here is our cell right here. I have the ability to change its uh, length on its side, but I want you to keep your eye on this area divided by volume. Now, if you'll take a look, when I have 10 micrometers right there, I have a ratio of 0.6. The number's not important. Just compare it to what's going to happen. Now, I am going to make this cell smaller and smaller and smaller, and if you'll notice, that ratio is changing. That ratio is going up, which is exactly what I want. I want to maximize that. And the smaller I make that cell, the higher that ratio is. So I started out at 0.6, but by getting smaller and smaller, that cell is getting better and better because that ratio is climbing. And if I change that to be a sphere, the same thing is going to be there. Same, uh, same idea. Very large cell has a very low ratio, but the smaller I make that cell, the better it's going to be. I'll have a link to this down in the description as well. So here I'm going to play around with it and I'm going to change it. I'm looking at a ratio here of about 0.4 and I can play around with that. But if I change the height of that, you'll see that the ratio is up a little bit higher now. It's almost a, a almost but not quite, is like a 3 to 1, 4 to 1 ratio there. So making a flat cell is better. Making that cell skinny is even better yet, but nothing's quite as good as making that cell incredibly tiny. So, uh, there we go. Big, bad. Skinny, better. Narrow, better yet. Tiny, best of all. And it works even if I try it with a different shape there. So I'll just uh, bring it up to the maximum size. So here I'm looking at a triangular prism. You can calculate the surface area to volume ratio there. It's actually not all that good. That one's less than one. But if I make it a little skinnier and flatter, that's better. We're at a four to one ratio. Make it tiny like that. That's good. We're at looking at like a six or seven ratio there. And you go up to this, I'm looking at almost a 1 to 8 ratio. So, in all cases, a smaller cell is better on that surface area to volume calculation. Okay, so let's talk about how the organisms grow. Organisms have to grow. There are no ifs, ands, or buts around this. This is a obviously a chick embryo. As it grows, organisms have to grow. They can't remain that small size forever. Whether it's an animal or even a plant, organisms have to grow. However, if their cells get to be too big, their cells, and by extension, the organism, will die. Can't live without your cells. So, for an organism to get big, its cells have to still remain small. So, an organism can get big, and obviously we've seen there's some pretty big ones out there, but its cells, its individual cells, have to be tiny, the smallest unit of life possible. So, when an organism grows, its cells will split in half to remain small, and we call that process mitosis. More on that later. 
Here you can see I have two selves, this one right here and this one right here, and sorry, two organisms, this one here and this one here. They have the same volume, but this one has the advantage because it has broken its body up into eight, you can't see the eighth one back there, into eight cells. Same volume, but now that they're smaller, those cells are less likely to die. They can take in the food and poop much, much, much easier. So this allows the whole organism to grow larger, but its individual cells remain small. Being multicellular, solves that surface area to volume problem. One large cell is bad. Lots of small cells that take up the same amount of space, much better. A lot more surface area here compared to this one. 5,400 on this compared to if you break it up into uh, 27 cells like that, you are uh, almost tripling the surface area while the volume remains the same. Here you can see, imagine this is uh, an organism. Here's one big one. If you break it up into smaller ones, better. Smaller, even better. Lots of small ones, best. So this one would be dead. Still dead. I can't draw smiley faces. Dead. And these, oh, I will not draw smiley faces for that, but you get the idea. This is one happy organism there because it's broken up into lots of small cells. Those cells aren't going to die. So, to recap, organisms have to become larger, but larger cells die from that starvation constipation combination. So, the solution is a large organism with lots of small cells. When cells get too large, they divide through mitosis.